I recently had the pleasure of meeting a young, talented artist by the name of Alyssa. Alyssa comes from my hometown of Billings, Montana. And she, in a tribe of volunteers, created a mural that really not only changed Alyssa's life, and not only the tribe of volunteers' lives, but an entire community, including my own. Alyssa was recently asked why she wanted to be a part of this project. This project was to take place on the south side of Billings. The south side is actually the oldest part of town. It's where Billings was actually founded. It is home to historic homes, a diverse population, a rich history. Its roots and community run deep, not just in the residents and the community of the south side, but it runs deep in the heart of my friend Alyssa. She calls the south side home, not just because she lives there, but because of the people. It's always because of the people. The people have grit, determination, and resilience. In fact, the people from the south side of Billings have a sort of kinship, if you will. Meaning, if you're from the south side and you meet another south sider, you have an automatic friendship, a connection, an unbreakable bond. My friend Alyssa was recently asked to be a part of this beautification project on the south side. The project was to take a mural that had become a graffiti-ridden eyesore and transform it into a work of art, transform it into a mural that people could be proud of, not just Alyssa, but the entire community of Billings and anybody who visits our fine town. During this conversation with Alyssa, I asked her lots of questions because it had moved me. This mural had changed how I viewed the South Side and my own community. I asked her to tell me about the challenges, the wins, the overall experience. She began to tell me that this project actually took 1,000 hours. That's six months to you and me. This community project came to life because so many individuals teaming up and collaborating with leaders across Billings, business owners, and individuals who care all came together to create something special. Her community showed up and they showed out. They showed up with things like scaffolding and paint, cold drinks, sandwiches, sometimes just simple thank yous or sometimes just honks of the horn while driving by. In fact, Alyssa documented over 100 special random acts of kindness that happened during this project. She actually told me about one special day where a homeless man came up to see the project, to see this creation. He was so moved by this mural that he gave her his last four dollars. He wanted to be a part of something special. He wanted to be a part of this community. Alyssa also began to tell me that as she neared the end of this project, her car was actually vandalized and some valuable items were stolen, all while she was actually painting. But her faith in community was quickly restored because several people from the community, not just the South Side, showed up with a GoFundMe page to help her recoup her loss. You may ask, how did they create this? Where did they find the money? Where did they find the support. They applied for what is called a space to place grant. So the South Side, like many other South Sides across America, have become a little bit dilapidated just because of the age of the area. So this grant was to take this space and transform it into a place that we can all be proud of. See, Alyssa, along with an impassioned community, came together to create something that will last in Billings and beyond, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but for generations to come. But I walked away from this conversation, this experience, this life-changing experience with Alyssa, 
And I said to myself, wow, look what can happen when community comes together. But conversely, I also walked away a little bit concerned, thinking, what happens when we're not in community? What happens then to our people? Remember I said, it's always about the people. See, I look at this mural as a representation of community. This is what happens when people come together. But when people aren't together, what has happened over the last few years? So I'm going to talk about that. What are the challenges that we've seen over the last few years? We've been forced out of community. We've been isolated. We've been quarantined. And with that has come a lot of challenges. According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, they indicated the pandemic has heightened the risk factors generally associated with poor mental health. What are those? Financial insecurity, unemployment, and fear. While protective factors such as social connection, i.e. community, Employment, educational engagement, access to physical exercise, a daily routine, and access to health services fell dramatically. This has led to an un, a significant and unprecedented worsening of the population's mental health. That's the bad news. That's the sad news. I believe because of this, we have increased suicide, increased homelessness, increased drug and alcohol use, increased violent crime, just to name a few. But like I said, that's the sad news. The good news is there's hope. These challenges offer opportunity for hope, opportunity for change, opportunity to strengthen and enrich and add value to our community. I'd like to share with you an idea, a simple idea that everybody can remember. See, what Alyssa did and her tribe of volunteers is they shared their gifts. I'm asking you to look in your own lives. Find out what gifts you have, and I'm asking you to share your gifts. Let's talk about G, groups, okay? Groups come in all shapes and sizes. By becoming part of a group like the volunteers, the tribe of volunteers that helped Alyssa paint this mural, they created something special. When people come together with one goal, it is amazing what a community can create. Like I mentioned, groups come in all shapes and sizes, different missions, different visions, different core values. I ask you to find a group that speaks to you and fills you up and allows you to share your gifts. You have so much to offer. I'm just asking you to step out in faith or your community. Let's talk about interests. What interests you? The beauty about sharing your interests is when you do that, you help and improve your own mental health, and at the same time, you can improve and help your community. Maybe you have an interest in cooking, and you decide to cook for a large group of people, in turn, creating community. Maybe you have an interest in animals, Take that desire to help animals and turn that into a simple act of volunteerism at your local animal shelter. The beauty of your interests is you can be selfish and serve yourself by pursuing your own interests and at the same time impact community. F, family and friends. You've all heard of this amazing concept called Friendsgiving, right? What an amazing concept. What used to be a celebration with your family, the people, the family that you were born into, now has evolved into a meaningful celebration, a sharing of a meal, a breaking of bread with people that are not just your family, but also your friends. Treasure those, value those, put them to work in your community. Let's talk about your talents. We all have them. Sometimes they might be hidden talents. Maybe you have a talent for listening that makes people feel heard and understood. What a gift. Maybe you have a talent to paint, like my friend Alyssa. I have another friend who has an amazing talent to sing. She has this beautiful voice. It's humbling, actually, to hear her sing. 
You won't hear her on the radio. She has a regular daytime job. But she gets to share her gifts by sharing her talent to sing at local events by singing the national anthem. Now that is a gift that brings community together. One voice at a time, one listening ear at a time. Finally, success. How do you define success? What is the success in sharing your gifts? I'm not talking about financial success or academic success. I'm talking about the success that you will feel when you simply share your gifts. I don't know what your gifts are. I'm just encouraging you to share them. Hopefully this helps. G-I-F-T-S. As I mentioned, I view that mural as community, a symbolic of community, representative of community. That mural that she created along with those volunteers, Montana landscape, the big sky country, powerful. That all sounds good. It all sounds logical. But you are not moved. People are not moved by logic. People are moved when you share from the heart. When you truly share your gifts and it moves from your head to your heart, that is where the real magic happens. So as I wrap up, I ask you to think back. What gifts can you share? What gifts can you give to build community? I'll leave you with one last thought. What mural will you create? Thank you. <laughs>